Okay, so I wanted to do a, another quick video to add on to uh, the support and resistance way of trading um, the way I trade. Um, I've seen something here on the pound USD that might make um, not only spotting this but also um, knowing when to take the trade a little bit easier. So uh, this is the, the pound USD 15 minute chart. Um, I'm in the Asian session, it's almost uh, 12 p.m. here. So I drew in this line. Uh, this was yesterday at some point that I drew it in. Um, and I'm going to show you how price action just, uh, it, it does always respect your your areas and your zones. Um, I had a question about this here where someone did say to me, when this sort of stuff happens or this sort of stuff happens, how do you know that this is going to continue on and um, that that uh, price action didn't respect the line. In actual fact, it did. And I'm going to show you um, how it actually did. Now, just before I do, I want to zoom in and share this bit with you. Um, when you draw in a support and resistance line, you have got to make a decision on where you'd actually take the trade. I always prefer a buffer zone. Now, what I mean by that is this. Say, for instance, I looked at the past and then drew in this um, support line. Um, and then every time price came close to, I would consider taking a trade. But I wouldn't take it until it hits this line. Now, for me personally, I like it when it hits my line and then pushes uh, forward a little bit. And the reason for that is I always want to buffer in my trades. Um, see how here, uh, I don't know how price action behaved for this candle, but more often than not, this is what I've seen where somewhere during this 15 minutes, price would have come down, hit the line, possibly protruded a little bit further out, and then it would have climbed back up. And it's, it's highly likely that in the last minute or so, price started to then travel south again, and then it, uh, in the last few seconds, it uh, I possibly would have even broken my um, if I would have traded somewhere here probably would have even broken my price and then gone back up and then tightly hugged this line in the last few seconds the buffer will protect you there so you'll still possibly end up winning by um, a couple of micro pips um, at the least or at the most but you always want to have a buffer now if you wanted to jump the gun here and say for instance your broker executed the trade where you are slightly here somewhere, well, in this case, you would have ended up losing that trade. So you do want to make sure that wherever you draw in your support and resistance line, there is a little bit of a buffer there for you. Um, and this is part of the reason why I would either, uh, when, I, when I'm starting to choose tips, I'll either do it at the tip, or in this case, see how here, um, this is outside away from the body. This is uh, at the tip of this one. I want to have a buffer. Um, and if I look at price and it's moving very, very quickly, then what I will also do is ensure that um, I won't take the trade until the, the, the bottom of the candle kind of just, to me, seems like it's slowed down a bit. If it's moving quickly, chances are it's going to keep going for a while. And you want to be able to catch that additional um, area that it's traveled as well. Okay. Um, now, with this... See how here this line has come close to my um, my support line in this case. Um, someone did ask me, do I take the trade before the line? Again, the same rules apply to here. No, I would personally wait till this comes in, hits my line, possibly even goes past it. The reason is I want to take safe trades. What if uh, this happened here? What if this came all the way down? It was a solid red candle like in this situation. Um, if you took the trade here and the candle finished off here, you still lose that trade. Uh, I'm not in the business of losing trades. I, I don't want to take a trade that is um, I'm, I'm likely to lose. Now, when we're demoing, these are the little things that we're learning that, hey, hold on a second, something like this or something like this could happen here. Um, I am somewhat psychic, but not psychic to a point where I can tell you exactly how or where this is going to finish off. But I know that the likelihood of this finishing off down here does exist. Now, if I would have taken the trade here, this would have still won if I did a call. But 
I'm better off losing a good, uh, sorry, better off missing a good trade than actually losing a trade and losing money. Okay, because there would be plenty of other trades that come your way. Now, look at all of these. Every single one of these candles here represented an opportunity. You're going to get a ton of them, um, especially if you're looking at a number of currency pairs. Okay, going back, uh, something that um, I know I've shared in, in one of the other videos, but uh, I had a chat to someone this morning, my time. So uh, this came up again, and I want to re clarify. Um, the use of Bollinger Bands. Uh, some of you have asked as to why uh, the market tends to move the way it does. Why does it trend strongly? Uh, why does it start to range? Those are all great questions. And I can tell you this, um, just from my experience within the industry, um, there are a lot of people, uh, a lot of professionals, uh, uh, many people that, that are very well educated, that have absolutely no clue as to why the markets move in the manner in which it moves. Um, there is a video coming, it's actually in my list of videos that I want to make, um, that's going to address this very, or not just this, but uh, a few of these questions as to um, what makes the market tick. Now, I'll share a little bit of information with you here in regards to the Bollinger Band. So let me zoom out again. Whenever you see Bollinger Bands um, constrict like this, what it actually means is it's giving you an indication that the market makers are most likely accumulating orders. And what that means is that the volume has dropped. So at that point, the transactions have been halted. You know, at some point, someone buys, someone sells. But in this case, the number of transactions have slowed down. It's not because the transactions haven't been ordered. It just means they're not being processed. What the market makers can tend to do is, it's, it's look, it's, I don't think this is legal, but I am truly aware. Um, I was actually privy to some of this um, in my days when I worked at a, a financial services institution. Uh, what it does is this is how they actually make the market. Uh, when you see traders uh, within the big banks and the big uh, dealers for the big banks and institutions, <clears throat> they actually have multiple screens where they actually get to see the orders coming in when they're doing uh, forex trades. So whereas we're just looking at the markets, they're able to see that certain amount of orders are coming through. And that's what they can utilize to control it somewhat. So here's one mechanism for them where they uh, will halt the, the transactions. So at that point in time, there's a lot of orders uh, accumulating. And what, what you'll see, how you see it when you're looking at the charts, are um, a Bollinger Bands beginning to constrict like this. That means volumes are dropping. And volume by volume, I'm talking about the amount of uh, currency uh, or transaction that's happening in the market at that point in time. What then happens is these institutions will most likely, because they'll know where the market's about to head to when once they release the floodgates. Okay, so once they start the transaction process again, they'll have an idea of where this is going. So if they've got like a few billion um, dollars worth of transaction uh, or, or an order, and they see more coming in. And they may say, hey, here's an opportunity for us to make some uh, uh, good money out of this. So what they'll say is, okay, there's a whole heap of cells coming for the pound right, uh, for, yeah, for the pound right now. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to hold this. Um, it possibly will climb to maybe 30, 40 billion or more. Um, and then they'll open the floodgates. So all of those get transacted. And so what you see is the pound being sold dramatically and the price starts falling. So they would have most likely somewhere up here taken a position. Okay, so when those transactions hit the market, you start seeing all of this happening. And then at some point, they possibly possibly will start to buy again. Okay, Is there, can you start to see uh, or understand how the markets uh, are formulated? These are people, These, well, although you see candles, uh, there are emotions and greed and and uh, strategy behind these. There are human beings behind each of these movements. Okay, um, uh, yes, there are institutions, but there are institutions 
that are run by human beings. Um, so once you start to look at the market in that way, the psychology behind this, it will become easier to, uh, for you to understand. So again, um, when you see um, these, these, these things happening, the Bollinger Bands constricting, know that there's a possibility of a trend or a spike on its way. Okay, so what I would have said happened here is um, accumulation. So the, the market makers started accumulating orders and they opened the floodgates. They took a position themselves here. They opened the floodgates, market came crashing down here. Um, then they started and, and then the, the purchase orders started happening here for, um, for calls. Uh, or long trades on this and then they possibly would have taken their own positions on this and then let the market climb back up again okay this is a standard W pattern that I would consider so if you can start to wrap your head around this and understand why the pattern formations happen and understand what the market makers are actually doing in the back end or background you start to be able to um, see how your trades can end up as well now Going back to support and resistance lines, <clears throat> notice how here I, I would possibly I wouldn't have taken this trade, but I possibly would have taken this one here uh, because it has hit my line. Uh, this one is a definite no because it didn't come anywhere close to my line. Now this one I would have traded this yes um, it, once it's hit my line. If it stayed there for a little maybe a brief few seconds, I would have taken that trade. But when this happened, I wouldn't have too close to the line. Plus, I've already taken a trade on this in the previous candle. So I, I would not have taken this one. So notice how this breaks through, goes straight over. This one uh, doesn't do much, but this then comes back and respects the line uh, and uses it as a, uh, a resistance, whereas for this, this was a support. Okay, this one respects it again, comes down, price heads back up again. Notice how here, uh, because there's a fair distance between here and here, normally I don't like trading a support and resistance line when there is candles like this, where it's one after the other. It, the, to me, this is a, a strong trend up. Um, if before my broker closes my entry point into the trade, so uh, before my uh, five minutes or two minutes are up, um, what... If, if this uh, price action for this one falls down and this becomes a red candle and then heads back up again, I may consider doing a, um, a put on this one. Okay, but there is a high chance that I would avoid this trade entirely. Uh, just for example's sake, you can see though that price did come and respect this zone, this area. Um, this one, again, after this, I, I probably would not have done any trades around here. Um, but if I would have taken this one, then there's a definite that here, I would not have taken this trade. Okay, now, for those of you that are seeing this now, uh, at some point, you may see price fall back down again, and then come and um, respect this line or this area all over again. So draw in your support resistance lines and then leave them there. Don't take them off. Leave them there and, and notice a, a day down the track if price has fallen down and, and notice its behavior in that area. Also, um, today is Friday here. So keep in mind, uh, more so on Fridays than any other day, you'll see some corrections happening. Um, so it's not likely at the close of markets where markets are trending up uh, so much. The corrections tend to be more going south than heading up. So uh, have a look at that. Um, think about how that may play out in your strategies. The other thing that I want to quickly mention, I'm going to create another video about silver per se. A lot of you, uh, I know uh, newbies in particular, have not touched commodities. Um, Gold and silver is quite nice to trade. Gold can be quite volatile, but silver is a, a controlled commodity um, because it's also a currency as well as it's used for industrial production. So uh, the price is controlled somewhat and you will see it. When you see it at, at its um, daily, weekly, monthly highs, then it's guaranteed almost that that's going to be pushed back down again. So you can do some really nice puts on that. Um, anyway, video for that is coming soon. Um, let me think if there was any other questions in regards to this. 
No, I don't think so. But um, just keep in mind, um, again, in this situation here, you don't want to be trading every single candle. So if I trade there's just that one, um, say for instance, in this case, if this one came in, hit my line, um, and I've taken a successful trade on that, okay, that's fine. Um, this one, again, there's no guarantees that this is going to hit and go back up again. So if anything, what I would have done here is, if I can zoom out again, Okay, so what I would have done here is I would have gone back uh, to see where price would have been for other candles and then I would draw in a buffer line. Okay, um, I chose this one. Why? This, these ones are too far out. Uh, but what I would have done is to say if this then hits my line and then comes somewhere close to this one or hits this one, that's when I will take the trade on that. Okay, so that's it for now. Um, uh, please just post your your questions um, under the appropriate video. So if you post it under this one um, in regards to this sort of stuff, then uh, it'll be easier for me to answer and also um, it will be helpful to other people that are watching it as well. Okay, thank you.